Today we're going to be taking apart this 1.6 liter four-cylinder Hyundai Kia engine to see what's inside and how it works. Now this here is a gamma engine which is a gasoline direct injected engine out of a 2013 Kia Forte. Now these engines were not nearly as notorious as the Theta series of 2 and 2.4 liter engines. Now taking a look around the engine underneath the timing cover we do have a timing chain with dual variable valve timing both the intake and the exhaust side. At the back here where it would be the firewall is where your exhaust would sit and on the turbocharged 1.6 models like in the Hyundai Veloster that's where the turbo would be. Coming around the back here you can see you've got an aluminum block, aluminum head as well as an alloy valve cover. It's not plastic. We've got our gasoline direct injection fuel pump here which is driven off of the exhaust camshaft as well as our coolant inlet. Coming around the front here you can see the high pressure line going to the fuel rail for the gasoline direct injectors sitting on the front here. That's going to inject fuel directly down into the cylinder head as opposed to in the ports over here. That way you don't have gasoline washing off the valves and then you end up with that carbon deposits inside of the air intake here which is not a a good thing. I'm going to begin this teardown by removing the valve cover. I'm going to remove the bolts for the gasoline direct injection pump. It will pop off this pump here. Now inside of here we do have a cam bucket. That cam bucket has a roller on it and that's going to move up and down with a special cam profile on the exhaust camshaft and that's going to cause this gasoline direct injection pump to move up and down and that's going to therefore pressurize the fuel. I'm going to remove this variable valve timing solenoid here and now I should be able to lift this valve cover off. And you can see underneath it's a very simple valve cover. Underneath here you can see these are the two cam sensors that are going to pick up readings from the end of the camshaft over here and over here. And of course underneath this baffle is where your PCV system is located. Now taking a look under the valve cover you can see we've got these camshafts here that are directly acting down on cam buckets. There's no roller rocker arm system which makes this nice and simple. Looking further at the variable valve timing system the intake side here is controlled by this solenoid which is built into the head whereas the exhaust side is controlled by the solenoid located up top here. They had to add an extension piece on top of the valve cover in order to get the oil over to that exhaust camshaft. I'm going to go ahead and remove this variable valve timing piece. It's just some ports for the valve. Next up I'm going to remove the water jacket over here. There you can see the water jacket with the coolant temperature sensor. Just going to get some of these brackets off here. Next up we're going to remove this gasoline direct injection rail. A bunch of 12 millimeters. Okay, two of the injectors came with it. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect that. I remove the gasoline direct injection rail. You can see these actually have a little bit of carbon and soot built up on them, but this rail operates at really high pressure in order to inject fuel directly down into the combustion chamber. Here we got the coolant bypass pipe. I'm gonna remove that next. Then over here we've got the thermostat. Pop that out. I'm gonna see if I can struggle and get this dipstick out. I really like how Hyundai gives you these engine anchors so you can pull this engine out when they fail and you got to do an engine swap. All right, let's pull off that engine hook. Just two 12 bolts and that all that holds up the engine when you pull it out. Let's get this engine mount off. Next up, I'm working on the front of the engine here to remove things like the water pump and then eventually the timing cover. So I'm going to start by removing these accessories here. I'm going to start with this idler pulley. This thing's actually made of plastic. Next, I'm going to remove the water pump pulley. And once you pop that off, we have access to all the water pump bolts. Alright, we'll give this a little tap with the hammer here. It's got a metal impeller. So far everything's been too easy. Let's see if this crank bolt is going to be too easy as well. Usually they don't come off with my impact. It's going to come off too. Oh wow. Alright, with everything out of the way here, I'm going to start taking off the timing cover. First a bunch of 10 millimeters. And now the rest are 12s. Alright, let's see if I forgot any bolts. Give it a little pry. And there's the timing cover. Things are pretty dry, so this engine's probably been sitting for a while without oil. You can see this here is the oil pump. It's a tiny little oil pump where you got your inlet and your outlet here. Taking a look under the timing chain cover, things are very simple. You've got your crank that powers the two camshafts. You have two timing chain slides and a hydraulic chain tensioner. There's no extra oilers or idler gears or anything else driven off of the timing chain. I think the name of the game is simplicity when it comes to this engine design. And before I loosen the chain tension, I'm gonna back off these cam bolts. All right, now I'm going to remove the chain tensioner. I'm going to remove the chain slide on this side. These are made of plastic. Remove the timing chain here. Okay, off the crank. It's like a bicycle chain, it's so tiny. It's going to take off the cam gear. Next we're going to go up to the top of the head here and remove the camshafts. Your 10 millimeter and 12 millimeter bolts. You need to remove them in order to access the head bolts down below.
This includes the ports here for your variable valve timing, which you can see inside of these tracks over here on this camshaft. And I'm going to remove all of these bearings here on the inside. I can pop off the exhaust camshaft, and here you can see the lobe here that powers the gasoline direct injection pump. And then remove the intake camshaft. Now here you can see the lobe where the cam sensor picks up its reading. Now the head bolts on these Hyundais are a triple square M10. I'm going to go ahead and remove them. These are actually pretty tight for an aluminum four banger. I'm going to go ahead and zip them off. Now I should be able to pull the whole head off. There we go. Oh well, well, it looks like the name of the game here is carbon buildup. Look how black everything is and it's got so much crust on it in the top of the cylinder head. Likewise, cylinder number one and number two does have a lot of carbon buildup. Number three's got a lot of rust in it, but this engine was sitting outside. And number four has a lot of crust in it. Not looking very healthy. Yeah, there's play in that broad bearing. These ones are okay. I'm willing to bet that this slipped a connecting rod bearing. The head gasket seems to check out. It's only two layers of steel though. And we've got an open deck design here with the water jacket. And there's actually a plastic insert just like Toyota's. Let's see if we can remove. That's the plastic insert there. And that's the other plastic insert. Actually has quite a bit of weight to it. The reason why they put this here is to help the engine warm up faster or something like that. I'm going to turn the engine over to make some mess. i got my brother's old Canada 150 shirt here ready. Oh, that wasn't very satisfying. Only when you're prepared, then bad things don't happen, I guess. And down at the bottom here, look at this tiny little oil pan. I'm going to go ahead and remove the tens that hold it on. Oh, they really glued this pan down. Look how much sludge is inside of here. It's not supposed to be like that. Either they extended their oil change intervals, or they put washer fluid in here. After all, it's a Kia Forte. I also see some sparkles in here, and something metallic, so we know that's probably connecting rod material. So here we've got the oil pickup tube. I'm going to go ahead and remove the two 12mm nuts. Alright, let's take a look inside. You can see some sparkly stuff in there. Again, that's probably connecting rod material. So now the lower oil pan's off. We're going to remove this upper oil pan. A bunch of 12mm bolts going all the way around. This also houses the oil filter housing over here. It's also likely I gotta remove this union bolt here in case there's another bolt down inside of the oil filter housing. 22 millimeter. Uh, no. All right, now I can go ahead and remove this upper oil pan. Taking a look at the bottom end of the Hyundai Gamma engine, you can see you've got a bit of an interesting design. First of all, this is our connecting rod bearing number one. You can definitely tell it's spun a bearing or something's really worn out there. Number four, and the rest of them, is actually pretty tight. Now I'm a little surprised at that because this engine uses an oil filter down in the middle here. When the oil is done filtering, it actually goes down to the main galley and splits off to either side, as opposed to some other engines which start from one side, and by the time you reach the back of the engine, it starves it of oil. Now because this is a budget-friendly engine, Engine. It's also very simplistic in design, which means that they've shortcutted a few things, such as the main cap bearings here only having two bolts, whereas some four cylinders might actually use four bolts per main cap. You've also got a pressed in rear main seal, whereas some others would use a bolt in design. And there's an internal trigger wheel on the crankshaft itself for the crankshaft sensor. These connecting rod caps are a 12.10 millimeter socket, so I'm going to go ahead and loosen them up. And we can zip them off. This one's a bit scored up. So the number one piston bearing that we saw was loose actually did not spin, which is when this actually heats up and turns around in this direction, leaving a gap here, which is what causes the engine to knock. So let's get this crankshaft out and we'll take a closer look. Now the main bearing bolts are a 12.12 millimeter. We'll go ahead and zip them off. Take off the main bearings. They have a little bit of scoring here. That one's pretty clean. That one's not too bad either, and bearing number one is okay. Just very slight wear. I'll take off the rear main seal, and now we're going to remove the crankshaft. Alright, so the crankshaft itself and the connecting rod bearings don't look very good. This engine definitely skipped some oil change. It was run low on oil, causing these connecting rod bearings to get chewed up. Check out how chewed up that one is, and that one. You can see there's actually little pieces of metal here that's coming off. Eventually it's going to seize up when you don't have enough oil in it. And the funny thing is these two connecting rod bearings which are closest to where the oil galley is are the ones that were first affected. The ones on the outside, piston number four and number one, don't seem as bad as two and four. Here's something interesting. This crankshaft is only stamped Kia on both sides. They didn't stamp Hyundai on it, so I wonder if Hyundai actually uses a different crankshaft in their Elantra and Accent models. I'm going to go ahead and pop these pistons out. 
check out the condition of these pistons. Now these are pretty small pistons because it's only a 1.6 liter engine and they're very lightweight. But you can see the top of them are completely coated in carbon. Piston number three and number four really didn't fare well. And what's more is that the oil control ring, which is underneath these two compression rings, this one right here, is completely clogged up. There's no oil that can pass through here as the piston is scraping it down in order to bring it back to the sump. So as a result, it ends up on the top here and the engine burns oil. That's also one of the side effects of your gasoline direct injected engines where that carbon isn't being cleaned off the intake valves your car ends up burning oil a typical Kia owner is not going to be smart enough to check their oil frequently and then you end up with an engine that's starved of oil and starts eating the connecting rod bearings in this situation so you've got the main components laid out here let's take a look at how it works we're going to start here at the bottom of the engine and the oil pans now a typical Kia owner might end up running them dry not change the oil that's going to end up with a lot of oil sludge built up in the engine which you can see here and that's going to cause a lack of lubrication in addition you've got the oil pickup tube here which can start to pick up any debris that's going to bring oil down to the front of the upper oil pan over here where it's going to run into the timing cover and here you can see you've got that timing cover where that oil is going to come from that oil pan up inside of the oil pump which is driven off of the crankshaft essentially this oil pan is going to create oil flow and send it out through this hole over here back into the block now oil from the oil pump is going to run back into the main block over here where it's going to come over to this oil galley here to these two ports where it's going to get filtered out by the oil filter which actually sits on the upper oil pan you can see there's a lot of interfaces here where the oil has to run through the upper oil pan to the oil pump on the timing cover then back into the block then back into the upper oil pan I don't really like that design because it opens it up to a lot of leaks where you have these different gaskets here I'd rather if everything was just built into one part like the lower oil pan and here you can see the oil filter housing on that lower oil pan where oil goes in and it goes back out through this oil filter here now back on the block the oil is going to come in from the oil filter and run down the main oil galley which lubricates most of the block you've also got a T that's going to go off here to the head to lubricate its components and run the variable valve timing system now the main oil galley runs along the front side of the block down in here and you can see that the main bearings tap into it going down this way to get oil to lubricate the crankshaft and connecting rod bearings now one thing Hyundai kind of skimped out on is putting oil spares which will tap off of that main oil galley and lubricate the cylinder walls now on the connecting rod sometimes there'd be a little hole here that would spray up inside of this piston head here to lubricate things but that's been omitted in addition sometimes there's a little circ clip that goes on this wrist pin here to hold it in place but that's also not present now the timing side cover here you've got the main oil galley which has a tap here that goes across to provide oil pressure to the timing chain tension in addition you've got an extra oil feed here which is going to go to lubricate the head and power the variable valve timing system back over here underneath the head you can see that's where the oil is going to go in to power the variable valve timing system we've also got our gasoline direct injectors over here which is going to spray gasoline directly into the combustion chamber that helps to cool things down and you can also control the combustion a little bit better of course the only downside to that is the carbon buildup on the back of these valves and carbon buildup galore it's so black and dark built up with carbon in there i can't see the valves at all and because you've got so much carbon build up on the valve it's going to start affecting your airflow and your engine's just not going to run right now these engines use cam buckets instead of a roller rocker arm system that directly acts down on the valve stem that means that these are not adjustable and you're going to eventually have to do a valve adjustment when things start to wear out but at that time this engine's probably ready for the bin anyways if you want to see a proper video on how variable valve timing system works check out the link i have above but essentially you've got oil that's going to come in from your oil control valve over here and the one that was on top of the valve cover that's going to control the cam fade between the input from this timing chain over here and the output which is inside of here that ultimately powers the cam shaft now, i don't really know why they always use security screws on these cams and that's pretty much what's inside of hyundai's 1.6 liter gamma engine and how it works if you got one of these make sure you check your oil frequently and service the intake to clean it out and subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one